Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. This post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, short form PSGN, is the most common cause of acute nephritic syndrome. And it is mainly due to post-streptococcal pharynx or skin infection. It is most commonly seen among children which are 6 to 10 years old. So these are the clinical features, where the child may present with edema, such as facial puffiness or swelling around the eye, abdominal distension or leg swelling, hematuria where there is blood seen in the urine, oliguria means reduce in urine output, hypertension where it may be an incidental finding during clinic follow-up, and also azotemia, which is a condition where there is abnormally high levels of waste products in the blood due to kidney failure. And this condition will cause the cramping of the legs, headache, extreme tightness, and even vomiting in the child. So these are the clinical features. If we are suspecting for post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, we can do these investigations, such as urine investigations, like urinalysis and urine culture. We can look out for hematuria, proteinuria, red blood cell casts, other cellular casts, and pyuria may be present as well. So hematuria is present in all the patients. Proteinuria, it may be traced to 2 plus, but it also may be in the nephrotic range, which is usually associated with a more severe disease. And this red blood cell cast, it is a pectognomonic of acute glomerulonephritis. Other investigations include bacteriological and serological evidence of a previous streptococcal infection later on causing this glomerulonephritis. Hence, it is called as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So, the investigations include doing an ASOT level, which is the anti-streptolysin or titer, where it will be raised more than 200 IU per ml. Increase in anti dns B if this test is available. It is a better serological marker of a preceding streptococcal skin infection. And we can also do throat swab or skin swab depending on what the infection the patient has had. For example, if they had a URTI, then we can do throat swab. Or there are skin lesions noted a few weeks ago, then we can do skin swab on the lesions. This is to find the causative organism, which is the streptococcus species. Other investigations include renal function tests to check the blood urea level, electrolytes, and also serum creatinine. Found where we expect to see anemia, mainly due to dilutional anemia and leukocytosis may be present. Complement levels such as C3 will be low at the onset of symptoms and it usually normalizes by 6 weeks. C4 usually is normal and we can also do renal ultrasound. But if the patient has a clear-cut acute nephritic syndrome, then it is not necessary to be done. So another investigation is renal biopsy, which is not commonly done and there are a few indications to do renal biopsy such as if the patient is having severe acute renal failure until they require dialysis, or they have features suggesting a non post infectious acute glomerulonephritis. Delayed resolution of the symptoms or signs, such as oliguria persisting for more than 2 weeks, azotemia more than 3 weeks, gross hematuria more than 3 weeks, or persistent proteinuria for more than 6 months, then these are the indications we have to do renal biopsy because we are thinking it may not be this PSGN, so we have to rule out other differential causes. This is the management for post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So after doing the investigations, if the ASOT is high, or there is increased anti dns B, or the causative organism is caught, uh, found out from the throat swab or skin swab, or other investigations suggestive of PSGN, then this is the management. So first, strict monitoring of the patient's fluid intake, urine output, daily weight, and also blood pressure. And these are all in the nephrotic charting. Give penicillin V for 10 days to eliminate the bacteria, which is the beta-hemolytic beta streptococcal infection seen in PSGN, such as uh, yeah, beta-hemolytic streptococcus. And if penicillin is, which is the erythromycin, Fluid restriction to control edema, which is the swelling, and to control circulatory overload during the oliguric phase. So fluid restriction until the child 
urinates in, in diuresis and the blood pressure is controlled. So day one, we restrict their fluid intake up to 400 ml per meter square per day. The reason why 400 is due to those insensible loss where the fluid loss through droplets when they respire or through stools and sweating and others. Day two, until the patient diuresis, we restrict 400 ml and after they start to urinate, their free fluid is allowed. So diuretics is given in children who have pulmonary edema, where they have shortness of breath. And it is also usually needed for treatment of hypertension. So we can give diuretics such as frusamide. For their diet, no added salt to diet and protein restriction is unnecessary in these patients. Also, besides this management, we look out for complications of PSGN, such as hypertensive encephalopathy. Due to the hypertension, it usually presents with seizures, pulmonary edema, or acute kidney injury, where there is acute renal failure. So these are some of the complications that we have to look out for. So after resolving the uh, PSGN, then we will need to follow up the patient for at least one year. So during every visit, we monitor their blood pressure, do urinalysis and check their renal function to evaluate their recovery. And if the C3 level is not normalized by the time of discharge, then we repeat six weeks later. So that's all for this video. Thank you.